welcome to Victory. We're so glad that you are here. Put your hands together. Let's do a little singing tonight. Here we go, choir. storm we're so thankful you're here tonight on a sunday evening look at the person beside you and say welcome to church come on just say it welcome to church that's right you made it back to a sunday night we're so thankful that you made it back stand up to your feet go ahead congregation stand up to your feet let's sing just a little bit of music tonight we're going to sing this song simply says oh how i love jesus you sing it out with us together here we go
Jesus, because he first loved me. If you love the Lord, give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful singing. Wonderful singing. So good to see you back on a Sunday evening. So thankful for the crowd that comes back to be at church on Sunday night. Let's us know you love the Lord and you're excited about what God is doing here at Victory and that you know you're not just a Sunday morning kind of person, but we're a Sunday evening also kind of person. We love the Lord and we love his house. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. We're so glad you've chosen to be with us tonight. And we're thankful you are here. You can be seated. Just a couple of quick announcements. The ushers are making their way on down here, and they'll uh, get ready, and we will uh, give as unto the Lord. But just a couple quick announcements this week. Again, we're back with our normal Wednesday night activities. You don't want to miss the Connect groups and all the groups that we have around here, the teens, the young adults. Thankful for our college students back. Church, are you thankful to have some college students back with us tonight? Give them a hand clap. Amen. And so we're thankful for them. So the young adults and the uh, teenagers and the kids and all the, uh, the uh, connect groups will all be meeting back together here on Wednesday evening. So you don't want to miss those. It's going to be a wonderful time there. And uh, don't forget about some stuff coming our way. Uh, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Guys, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. So you mark it down. Same, same date every year. So you need to get some chocolate and some flowers or whatever you do. And also we want to mention we have an awesome activity coming uh, it's our Teen Valentine's Gala Banquet that we put on each year. It's a great fundraiser for you. Go ahead, and it's on the Church Center app, and get registered to help us go to Arise. It's a wonderful time. We've got some great songs and music and skits and wonderful food planned for you guys that evening. Uh, it'll be a great time together, and you don't want to miss it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mr. Bill, if you will, Mr. Bill Burr, if you'll come on up and bless the offering, and uh, we'll ask the Lord to bless it. And uh, thankful so much for what God has done in this place. Amen. I already bought my wife one Valentine's gift already this year. I'm doing good. Anybody else done that? Me and Ken. Me and Ken. It's good to be here tonight, ain't it? Y'all glad to be here? I am thankful that Wednesday night has started up. Our Connect group started up Wednesday night, and I had a ball back here. And uh, it's a good place to be. So come out Wednesday night and see what the Lord will do for you. Let's pray. Dear God, I love you. Oh, how I love Jesus was the song we just sang. I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you for eternity in heaven with you. I thank you for this place. I thank you for the good word we heard this morning. Pastor talked a little bit about what we did last year, and we don't want to settle there. We want to move forward for you. We look forward to what's ahead of us in 2024 with Jesus, our Savior. Pray that you bless this offering. Give us a good night tonight. Bless the preacher. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you that we get to come boldly before the throne and pray and seek your face. And God, I thank you so much for speaking to us already in the music and letting us worship you this evening. Thank you for a body of believers that can come together on a Sunday night to worship you, to hear from you, to encourage one another. And Lord, I thank you so much for this church family. I pray, God, that you'd move. Fill us individually with the Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord. Help us to be filled with your Spirit, to be listening and waiting on you to move, Lord, anticipating you in this service. Bless the rest of the service, Lord, with the music. Bless the preacher as he preaches. Help us, Lord, to do what this word for the year is and help us to be revived. Help us, God, to have a renewal this year. There's people under the sound of my voice now that they're struggling. Lord, we know that there's people that have lost loved ones. There's people that are struggling with health. People may be watching online that are struggling with different things that they're suffering with, Lord. And we know that you're the answer. And I pray you'd please touch them. Help them, God. Help us now as we worship you and bless the preachers he comes after. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Stories of what they think you're 
his holy name. Stand to your feet, congregation, at this time. Aren't you thankful for a father that loves us and loves us no matter what? He is good. And he is wonderful. And I'm thankful that we know him today. Uh, shake somebody's hand right there close beside you. The choir is going to go find themselves a seat. Uh, choir, great job. Can we give the choir a big hand tonight for singing to us? Amen. And for the Lord, bless his holy name. Y'all play just a moment. Shake some hands and we'll open our Bibles for some preaching. Thank you. church tonight somebody say amen. amen praise the lord praise the lord well take your bibles out isn't that a wonderful thing to hear take your bibles out i love when we get the chance to open god's word and uh, we had a wonderful time today in our next steps class today mike how many think we're in next steps this morning we had 30 people uh this afternoon in next steps class for new membership are you thankful you go to a growing church amen, amen. so next steps was a success it's wonderful we get to talk to all those people and we talked about uh, God's Word in there. So I'm thankful for a chance to open up God's Word and to share it with you guys. And we love that around here. We love preaching it around here. And I appreciate uh, the one who's going to come do that for you tonight. I love Brother Timmy Newton and all he means to us. He has been here for many, many, many years. And we're thankful for his hard work, his fellowship, uh, his, uh, his faithfulness to the ministry. And uh, you guys give an old down-home Victory Baptist Church welcome as he comes to open up God's Word. Y'all go welcome Brother Timmy Newton. Amen. Uh, thank you, Josh. If you will, take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 6. While you're turning, let me remind you just to add a few things that some of have already mentioned, but we will continue all our regular groups going back this week. Uh, Monday night, our 180 will continue to be going on. There's a meal at 6 o'clock. It starts at 6.30. Our regular Tuesday night, which is a men uh, and women's Bible study. Uh, my wife leads a ladies' class I lead a men's class that'll be going back on uh, this Tuesday night at six o'clock as well. And then our uh, Wednesday night classes, we have a lot going on. We have many classes for seniors at six o'clock, uh, many other classes at seven o'clock, uh, men and women, couples. Uh, there'll be an auditorium Bible class that'll be down here at seven o'clock as well as in the back, um, Brother Bill and Miss Cindy's class, they start also this week or they'll be continuing this week. So uh, if you'd like to, uh, Know more about that, you can come to the fellowship hall. The meal starts at 5.30 uh, on Wednesday, and there'll be somebody that can direct you and help you with that. If you will, Proverbs chapter 6, have a seat, if you will. I'm going to read there in just a minute. If, fellas, if you'll go ahead and turn to that. On Sunday nights, our pastor has been reading and been teaching out of the book of Proverbs on wisdom. Uh, it is considered one of the wisdom books along with Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Wisdom is the theme of the book. It is actually mentioned 37 times. Wise is mentioned 62 times. And King Solomon was known for his wisdom, his wealth, and his writings. There's 32 chapters, 915 verses in the book of Proverbs, but wisdom is not the word that is used the most in there. If you look, the reference to your words 
such as your mouth, your words, your tongues, your lips, your speech, is mentioned over 225 times. So over one-fourth of the book of Proverbs talks about your mouth. <laughs> During the reign of Solomon, he reigned for 40 years. It is said, or you can read, it was a time, it was the most prosperous time in the life of the children in Israel as well, uh, the most prosperous as well as the most peaceful time. There was no war going on during Solomon's reign of 40 years. I think it had to do with the tongue. Uh, probably the most prosperous and peaceful time in our life can be traced back to that as well. Our tongue can be life and death. Our tongue could be prosperous or it can be peaceful. In 1 Kings chapter 3, we read when Solomon became the king of Israel, it is said that he was a child. When God appeared to him, he said, I am but a child and I don't know how to go out and go back and forth and I pray that you give me an understanding heart how that I may lead the children of Israel. The word child there, there's nothing that really says exactly how old Solomon was, but according to Jewish writings and Jewish history, Solomon was about 12 years old. And it says, he said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this so great a people? And the Bible says, And the speech pleased the Lord. At a 12-year-old child, that speech is pleasing the Lord. I wonder how many 12-year-old, I wonder how many 20, I wonder how many 40, I wonder how many 60-year-olds, 80. I wonder who's sitting in this room tonight that our speech is pleasing to the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 6, if you'll turn there if you would. It says in 6.2, it says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Goes on down in verse number 16, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running, to mischief a false wisdom to speak of lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. So seven out of those things has to do with the tongue. Someone heard, a, a few heard that I was preaching tonight, and one of them came and said, hey, Step on our toes tonight. I said, no, I'm not going to step on your toes, but I might step on your tongue. And my tongue. I started to title this, Me and My Big Mouth. <laughs> or, change your words and change your life. But I'll stick with words of wisdom. Justin, if you're watching tonight, I had this before the ball game last night. <laughs> Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Has someone's word affected you in your life? Good or bad? Brother Mike came by here a while ago and heard I was preaching and said something. Brother Mike, I'll never forget the first time that I preached on the bus when I was a teenager, not a teenager, I was a young single. And the teens and young adults were riding up and down and doing soul winning. And I remember the first sermon I ever preached. I can tell you what it was, where it was, but I can tell you Brother Mike came up to me and said, I want you to preach that same sermon on Sunday, Saturday morning at the bus breakfast. You'll never know what that meant to me, Brother Mike. But years ago, when I was in the sixth grade, I went to a school in Atlanta, Georgia. We were graduating, they had kind of a graduation class 
thing that was going on the day we were fixing to graduate and go into the elementary, from the elementary to the junior high. And we were sitting around with a group of, a group of boys, and there was four of us, there was five of us, but it was me and James and Benny and Eddie, and we were sitting around, and one of the boys asked the teacher, said, what do you think that we'll do when we graduate? And I don't know what all she said to all the rest of them. She said, maybe to Eddie, you'll be a doctor, and Benny, maybe a lawyer, or this, that, and other, but I'll never forget what she said. She paused when it came to me, and one of them said, what do you think that Timmy will do? And this is what my English teacher said to me. She said, I don't think that Timmy will ever amount to anything. Now, I went to church that same Sunday, and I've got a Bible I still have to this day that I went to church that same Sunday morning on a bus route, and I remember a man by the name of Jay Bice that stood up and was teaching that you do mean something to God. But let me say this. I can't tell you what Jay taught that morning, but I can remember what the elementary teacher said that day because negative words are so powerful that it takes probably five times more positive words or more to overcome a negative word that we say. And I ask you tonight, Someone has said, I often regret my speech, but never my silence. And tonight, just for a few minutes, I want to give you a few thoughts on watching your words. I got a little videotape a while ago from three little grandchildren that are sitting in a room in Atlanta that is watching their pop off. And I need to watch what I say. Because somebody is watching me. And let me say this. You, first of all, be careful what you say. Your words define who you are. Your words define. Years ago when I first came here, Steve Bainham will probably remember this, that uh, Brother Brown had, was a football coach. And this particular year we went up and they had team camp and football camp together. And the year before, they had this one individual that actually, a young boy, he and the girl broke up, and he was running through the woods, and uh, he ran into a barbed wire fence, and it caught him across the neck, and we found him in the woods, and he wasn't terribly hurt. He was just more embarrassed and, of the thing that was going on. So next year, they put him in my cabin, and they said, I want, he was actually doing well. To, actually, to this day, he's a, a youth director in uh, Tennessee, uh, but they put him in my cabin and they said, we want you to watch over him. Everything seems to be good, but last year this is where everything happened and fell apart. And so we're sitting in the room together, it's in those cabins, and uh, it had the, uh, the, the, the uh, it was a, a wood cabin, it had uh, uh, fluorescent lights in the top, there was no air conditioner in them, and we had these bunk beds that were in, and everybody went off to lunch, and me and this individual was still sitting there. And I said, hey, I got an idea. We went and got a rope, and I tied it around his waist. Then I tied it around his neck. And I said, let's tie it on the rafters, and let's, let's make it look like you hung yourself. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and so we pulled the bunk beds together. And so he's standing up there. We turned the fluorescent lights down so it's kind of a real dim and you just see the silhouette. And I said, when they come in, I want you to drop yourself and it looked like you hung yourself swinging back and forth. And so we do that and we're, I'm standing behind the bed and he's up there and all of a sudden some of the ones come in and one of the first ones was the starting running back for the ball team and he comes in and he sees that and a big cuss word comes out of his mouth. Scares him to death. Actually, they all got behind it. We've done it one more time, and the uh, starting linebacker come down. He got so scared he was running off, we had to chase him down and tell him it wasn't real. But all that day, that young fella kept telling me, Brother Timmy, I didn't mean that that was an accident. That just slipped out. You ever said that before? Have I ever said that before? 
Jesus said, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the hearts, y'all finish it. What? So what comes out of your mouth defines what's in your what? I didn't say that, the Bible did. Proverbs 29, 11 says, A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth an end till afterwards. He that speaketh for truth showeth for righteousness. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. I'm just reading Bible verses, y'all. I'm speaking to me tonight. Your words define. The Bible says, in the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. Violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Thou art snared again by the words of your mouth. What is defining coming out of your mouth? What is it telling everybody that you or I am? Not only that your words define, but your words can discourage. Many of you heard, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words that never hurt me is no, it, it, it ain't even close to the truth. I've had the opportunity just to participate in some of the sports again here at the school. And one day, one of the kids was getting ready for basketball. And I remember I told him, I said, man, I got confidence in you today. And this is what he said. He said, well, my mom and dad doesn't. Have I ever said that? Have you ever said that? Our words can be a discouragement, but also our words can destroy. It says, wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool is near destruction. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Now, I'm not going to read all 225 verses out of the book of Proverbs, but I challenge you. I challenge you. On November 17th, 1983, Preacher Brown was preaching a message up in the building up here and I remember one night on that night he was preaching and he was quoting Bible verses and I couldn't remember where it was and I went home that night and began to read the book of Proverbs and I began to study and actually began to memorize some of the verses and the very first verse that I memorized was in 1728 it said even a fool is counted wise when he holdeth his peace and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding I challenge you to go through the book of Proverbs and read what it has to say about your tongue. It says a fool's mouth is his destruction. Years ago that we used to have a food pantry up here, one of the college students came to me and I was in charge of it. He was washing clothes one night in a washerette and he found trying to witness this guy that he needed some groceries and so we took some food over to his house and and when we did, we sat down and the man began to tell us a story. We went in there and he had very little food in his house. He had two little girls. He had a job that he was working consistently. And he began to tell the story. He said that one day, he said, I was riding down the road, or actually I was stopped at the Rayco gas station. If you lived here very long, you know where it was at the end of Martintown Road on the left. He said, one day I was pumping gas in my Mercedes Benz. He said, I had everything that I could want. He said, I had a house at the lake, a house uh, where, I, where I'm at now. He said, my wife was, the, ran, was in charge of the banks in the region in three different uh, states in this area. He was a skier. He said, I, I'm in, I was in the top 25 in skiing. I had sponsorships. And my life was everything that I wanted it to be. He said, and one day I was at the Rico gas station pumping gas in my car and he said there was a man came by in an old beat up car or a beat up truck and it looked like they had everything that he owned on back of that truck. And he said he pulls up to me and he says, sir, I'm on my way to Aiken and he said, I'm trying to move. And he said, is there any way you could loan me five dollars that I could get my family to Aiken? Back then you could buy a lot of gas for five dollars. But he said, I looked at, at that man and I said, why don't you go out and get yourself a job? 
He said, not longer after that, he said, we was riding down the road, me and a family member, and we was going to a family reunion, and we noticed that there was a man chasing a woman through the woods, and we stopped to help, and it was one of our family members chasing his, uh, 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 his wife through the woods. He said, we calmed him down and got him in the car and began to talk to him, and he said, he pulled the pistol out and shot me in the leg. He said, since that day, I've had 12 operations in this leg. He said, I've lost my wife. He said, I have a job. I've lost about everything I got. He said, I, I work as a welder in Aiken. And he said, my wages have been garnished. And he said, I barely can keep a house and can't even keep food on the table. But this is what he said. He said, I can contribute all of that to what I said to that man when he came up to my truck or car and asked me for $5. Our words carry weight. What are we saying can be, Josh has a phrase that he says many times. He says, what? Speak life. But so many times we don't speak life, we speak death. Because it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. When David was approached by Nathan and Nathan began to tell him the story about this person that had one little hue lamb and this other had a whole abundance of lamb. And what did David said? What did David say? He said, thou shalt restore to him fourfold. And David was angry. And Nathan looked at David and said, thou art the man. And he pronounced judgment on his own life. Read the story. But not only can your words define, your words can be discouragement. Your words can be destructive, but your words can be delightful. Years ago when Tony Dungy was fired as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they said he wasn't tough enough because he never used a cuss word or used foul language. Two years later, he went to the Indianapolis Colts and became Super Bowl champion. The lips of the righteous feed many. Pleasant words drop as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom. Your wife is not a dog. Your husband is not an Ill illegitimate child. You are to read the words that Solomon would use about his wife and she would speak about him in the Song of Solomon he would say, my love, my dove, my fair one, my spouse, my princess's daughter. She would say about him, my friend, my spouse, my king, the chiefest among them all. Be careful what you say, but be careful when you say it. Timing is everything. The Bible says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be likened to him. But it also says, answer a fool according to his folly, when the, lest he be wise in his own conceit. You know, when your wife gets a new dress or a hairdo or, or fingernails or whatever they do and somebody else compliments them on it, it's too late for you to say anything about it. <laughs> or when your son's playing basketball or your girl's doing something and Somebody else compliments them on them, and then you decide to, too, but it's a little bit late. When somebody else is doing timing is everything. And let me say, be careful the way you say it. It says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Be careful the way you say it. Sometimes I'll, Kathy will be, I'll be telling her something, she'll tell me something back and, and she didn't understand what I said or forgot what I said and I'll, I'll say it, I, I told you a while ago, this, this, that, blah, 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 and she'll do this. She said, Kathy, you're so stupid. You didn't get that a while ago? I said, I didn't say that. She said, that's what I heard. You ever heard them say, you said this, but I heard that? The Bible says pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. 
I'm not going to give an invitation, but I'm going to give a stern application. Listen carefully. James 3.10, I don't know if you got it up there. It says, out of the mouth proceedeth blessing and cursings. James said, my brethren, these things are not to be so. Why is it that things are coming out of our mouth of blessings and cursings? The theme for this year is revive. I wonder how many of you sitting in here tonight that there's a relationship that you'd like to revive. Whether it's a son or a daughter or a spouse or a family member or a marriage or a job or a ministry. Last week our preacher preached out of the book of Matthew chapter 7. It says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to a wise man. Verse 26, it says, and whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, I will liken to a foolish man. So what you heard tonight, you can do one of two things. You can say, I heard it. Good message. I ain't going to do nothing about it. If you hear it and you do it, you consider it a what? If you hear it and you don't do it, you're considered a what? I didn't say it, the Bible did. Now how can I do it? Solomon also said in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Be not rash with thy mouth. He said, therefore, let thy words be few. One thing we can do is don't talk as much. (laughs) <laughs> and this one, I don't know if you got it, Proverbs 10, 12, it says, if thou hast done evil in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thy hand upon your mouth. <laughs> I kid you not, I don't know if he's in here tonight, one man about two years ago came up to me and he said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, and he had a whole roll of duct tape. He said, if I get to talking too much, I'm going to give you this duct tape to put over my mouth. Did you not? You ever thought evil, thought wrong? David said, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. James 1, 19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, let every man be swift to what? And slow to what? You know, God didn't give us two mouths and one ear. (laughs) He gave us two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. Again, I read this at the beginning. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What are you going to do about what you heard? Psalms 119, 9 and 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not what? I challenge you to go through the book of Proverbs or even in James and look up some verses on your tongue and see what it does. And I finish with this. Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse number 19. Not sure if you have that. If you could put that on the screen. It says, I've called heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death. You have life and death in your mouth tonight. You want to fix that relationship? It can happen with your mouth, my mouth. Blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life, both thou and thy seed may live. I put it before you tonight. Is it going to be life or death with our mouth, with our tongue? Let's pray. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I wonder how many folks, we're not going to give an invitation tonight and ask you to come down front, but I wonder right there where you are, right there in your pew, Let's take a moment and let's ask the Lord to help us with what we heard. 
as Pastor Timmy told us that the book of James tells us not just to be hearers of the words that we just heard, but be doers also. So by an uplifted hand, I'd like to ask you this tonight. How many of you heard something tonight and you would say, Brother Josh, from the words I just heard, not from Brother Timmy's mouth, but from the word of God, I heard something tonight that convicted me to do better and my hand before the Lord lifted up. I'm gonna ask God to help me tonight with my tongue. Let me see your hands right now. Lord, you see our hands. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you see our hands together, Lord. You see all of our hearts. Lord, hands were lifted up all over the building. And Lord, tonight, if we're real honest, all of us could do better with the words that we speak, God, and the words that we say. And I pray, God, you'd help us speak the life that we need to into other people. Lord, your word tells us that if we can't even control our tongue, God, then our religion is in vain. God, people don't want to hear what we have to say if our tongue is unruly and we can't control it. So, Lord, I pray tonight we would help us, God, be bathed in your spirit and in your love and in your word and in prayer because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks God if we put your word in our heart if we put your prayer into our heart if we put your music into our heart God out of the abundance of those things God our words will then bring forth life but if we put other stuff in God it will bring forth death so tonight Lord I pray you'd help every single one of us with our hands lifted before you God you know who raised them Lord, help us to do better. Help us find the ones at that workplace tomorrow morning that need an encouraging word. And Lord, you've been prodding us and been telling us to speak to them and to encourage them. And yet so far, because of fear, we haven't. I pray that tonight would be the night, Lord, that changes. And tonight would be the night we step out of our comfort zone and we would speak into the people that need to hear it. And God, you would help us do that, Lord, tonight. I pray we'd understand that life and death are in the power of the tongue and those that love it. Lord, we'll eat the fruit thereof. Lord, we'll eat the fruit from the wonderful things we speak or God will eat the fruit from the death that we speak. So tonight, Lord, help us and encourage us. Thank you for the truth from your word that we heard. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, amen. Are you thankful you heard the truth from God's word tonight? Will you give the preacher a big hand clap, amen, and the God's word a hand clap, amen?